Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this Sony SCD-CE595. I picked this up in an estate sale for a price of $28. I probably got a discount on it of 25 or 50%, I forget which. Um, on the last day they usually have discounts and that's what I did. So this dates from about 2004 and it includes the SACD capability that was kind of being launched at that time uh, ended up being kind of a failure in the marketplace but we'll save that for another day but uh, the key thing here is that if you were to buy a new SACD disc for this or even a used one it would probably cost more than the 20 or more dollars that I paid for this so I'm looking at this not so much at, for what it is as an SACD player but as a sort of a high-end carousel player that has a lot of um, you know hopefully high audio quality here we are looking at the back optical output kind of standard this is designed for 5.1 surround sound so you've got front left and right surround left and right center and subwoofer so you can connect this directly to a 5.1 channel um, AV receiver of some kind and get the sound that way or a lot of them have a built-in optical input that you can connect uh, directly our plan for this video is to give this a basic test I think there's a good chance that it works since it came from an estate sale and uh, I'll do a basic listening and functional test and then we'll pop the lid and look inside and see how the carousel mechanism works and whatever kind of uh, other technical details we can glean from it. I've looked at the information I've been able to find online about this for technical specifications and it gives a lot about uh, you know harmonic distortion and things like that kind of standard audio specs but it doesn't tell them anything that I found about the uh, you know conversion mechanism a lot of times CD players will say you know 24 bits or 1 bit or something like that to kind of give you some idea of the uh, technology used to convert the uh, signal into audio so I plugged in the uh, front outputs here that go to the aux inputs of my uh, test stereo that I'm using I've got this pair of Polk audio speakers that I had kind of sitting around untested. I already did a brief functional test on them using the radio and they work. So we'll cover those in detail in another video, but uh, this is what we have for now. So I'm going to turn it on for the very first time right now. We have a display. I didn't realize if I'm really lucky this could have some discs already inside it. I got lucky. I don't think this is my disc. It could be. Maybe I put, tried one and forgot about it. Anyway, we'll put in some YouTube safe music, which I have burned onto a CDR. I bought some CDRs for that just the other day. Turns out you can still buy them. 10 pack for $4. Gotta love that. So I don't know how to operate this we'll just find out as we go here's play okay now that I recognize is one of my YouTube safe tunes let's turn that up sounds pretty good let's uh, what is this Find out. Oh, this is nice. We have a dial for the tracks here. Lots of other features. I don't know. It says I'm on disc five. Let's go to disc four. It'll probably refuse me since there is no disc four. Okay, it goes back to disc five. That works as expected. 
uh, we'll play you can use the dial for tracks it looks like and this is the fast forward and reverse button so here we've got what I usually call tape recorder controls play pause stop fast rewind and fast forward there's more here uh, we'll look at that later on but um, anyway this is a success so far so let's go ahead and pause that and uh, next we'll pop the lid on it and see what we find inside this has a standard type of arrangement for audio equipment two screws on each side smaller screws on the back and usually there's a good uh, lip that goes there so I'll take all those out and we'll magically pull it off afterwards well I've learned the hard way that it's uh, pretty difficult to take these lids off with one hand so I'm not going to subject you to that the typical procedure is pull out on the sides and then lift up near the lip and here we can see yet another CD inside well this one and probably the other one actually were mine I guess maybe I've tried this before and forgotten so let's go ahead and take a look inside one thing I noticed is I got a toy surprise which is this CD or ideally SACD inside let's see what it is Joe Walsh analog man it's kind of scratched up as you might imagine for those of you who are two people you can notice that this is a triode on the uh, graphic here but back to the CD player I'm going to turn it on and you'll see that it goes through a seeking procedure as they always do trying to find out which disc is present and which isn't it's probably an optical sensor of some kind so this is essentially a single disc player with a carousel mechanism here you can tell this is the brains of the unit including the audio output um, you know we've got our audio outputs here optical here uh, some ICs audio output circuitry here and power supply conditioning here's a probably a three terminal regulator which is a local power supply for this board or power conditioning uh, there may be more this might be a bridge rectifier this little rectangular piece here's the transformer part of the power supply and that also connects to the front panel board we can't really see that here without taking the lid off which I probably won't do the front lid here's the power switch assembly which is just a basic power switch with a little plastic mechanism to turn it on a couple of line conditioning components this veractor so since they gave us Joe Walsh let's try out Joe and if the YouTube cops get after me, then I will blame the late owner of this. So there we're seeking. I'm going to hit play to get it restarted. <laughs> Let's do some different tracks that might make YouTube happier. Now this says CD on it. Shut off Joe there. This says CD on it, which makes sense. It probably has an SACD and a CD identifier. Looking at the label on this, it appears to be just an ordinary CD. So that makes sense to me. You can see that we're um, still spinning while in, I forget if I'm paused or not, we'll try stop. Okay. 
and it stops. So there's every reason to believe that this unit works. Um, let's try out some of the other features here. I guess it has to kind of... I hit one of the disc skip buttons and basically it went to there and decided there wasn't a disc there. So I think in practical terms the memory of this is really if the discs are literally there. In other words, it doesn't remember anything. Alright Joe, don't get me in trouble with the copyright cops at YouTube who will beat me to a bloody pulp if I violate their draconian rules. So let's go back around to the other side again, just for fun. We can match up the components here that I talked about. Audio outputs, digital output, you can see that right here. And you can see from sort of a construction point of view, this is all plastic. Uh, one small board that holds most of the guts of it. A uh, front panel board that we aren't going to be able to look at without taking it apart, which I'm not going to do. Uh, kind of a basics of a power supply and distribution board, which is mostly transformer um, and connections. I think that's all that is actually. Here's a close-up of the audio processing board. This large chip that you see uh, says Sony SACD on it. So that's probably the main SACD processor. May even include the D to A converters for each channel. We've got a couple of other large ICs that Maybe the D to A converters, hard to tell. We've got three chips here that look like uh, two channels each for a total of six output channels. And I kind of get that from the topology of they're heading this way and with some, you know, capacitors and resistors to kind of bypass or uh, bias those in some way. So that's about what we can tell from this board without looking up each chip. These are also pretty highly integrated ICs. So uh, there's a lot going on here in some form. We got this attractive display. Here it is opening the tray. And you can see that it conveniently gives me the one that I was just playing as the first output. Here you can see more of the mechanism, more plastic gears. So all this is, you know, honestly cheap construction, but that's the nature of this. This is a consumer product. And the fact that it's plastic on the inside is probably just fine for this purpose. Um, I think this was kind of a budget level item from within the SACD category. Um, so overall, I'm happy with this purchase. This may become my main CD player. Uh, I've got several others sitting around that we'll look at in future reviews. And I haven't tried out all features of this because I don't have a, an SACD to drive the 5.1 sound. But based on the fact that it came from an estate sale and that the rest of it works, there's really every reason to suspect that the 5.1 feature and the SACD feature works. So that ends our video on this Sony SACD player from about 2005. Thanks for watching and bye bye.